Hey guys, I'm finally back. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to get the best render settings for Redshift and how to get Redshift to look even better than Octane. So, let's just jump into it. Here in Cinema, I have a scene. You have probably seen it if you follow me on Instagram. If you haven't followed me on Instagram, then please do, uh, because I post there often and uh, you can get a sneak peek of the next project. So, I have a scene here, and let's just see how it looks. Oh, that's that's not great. Um, so, I rendered that scene out with Octane, and it looked like this. So, how do we get Redshift to look like this? Well, first of all, we're gonna throw some GI on it. So I usually do brute force as my primary and I do irradiance point cloud as my secondary. I found that uh, this was the cheapest way to get GI on a scene. Um, yeah, and <laughs> I just cranked the numbers up real high. I think they start at 12, I believe, or 16. Um, but you can crank them as high as you want. Uh, it doesn't really matter. In some scenes it does, but in this I just leave it at around 2000. So this looks so much better now with GI. So how do we get this to render faster? Well, instead of cranking the unified samples, let me just show you here. Instead of cranking the unified samples up to let's say a thousand or five hundred um, because that takes a lot of time to render let's do it another way so Octane has this great mode where you could uh, where you can do adaptive sampling but you can't control the adaptive sampling so this is where Redshift has the sampling overrides. It's kind of like adaptive sampling, but you can control each and every criteria for your scene. So let's select reflection, and I usually don't go over 256 because you don't really gain that much for machine, and it takes a lot of time to render it. Sometimes, if you have a lot of shiny things in your scene, you might go to 512, but it's not necessary for this scene. So let's just set it at 256. Let's go down to light. So we also need a lot of light samples in this scene. Let's just try to crank it up a bit. 128. And let me just do a quick preview. Alright, before I do the preview, I'm just going to make it a little bit bigger so you guys can see it. Um, move this over here. Alright guys, so here's the image. And I actually just went back and got a render with no override samples um, turned on. So, yeah, this is how it looked before. It's quite noisy, um, I must say. We only got 16 samples max. Here we got the other one, and the first one looks a bit more noisy. And it actually took way longer than the less noisy one, which is pretty weird, but um, yeah, let's just continue. So if you just crank these numbers, I found that 512 uh, is a good number for me for this scene and I didn't need any refraction, I didn't need any ambient occlusion, uh, I didn't have any volumes, don't have any subsurface scattering. So the next step is when you got your sampling overrides all done and you can't push the noise levels down further, then you're gonna go to your unified sampling again. And your unified sampling is kind of like a multiplier. For me, this is the last resort to get 
noise free renders. Because if you crank these numbers up, you will get a lot of time added to your renders. So this is the last thing you do. So let's just set this to 64 and 32. So let me just render this and show you how this looks. So the render is finally done. It took 2 minutes and 48 seconds, which is pretty good, I think. And you can see the noise level, it's much lower. It's actually as low as the Octane one. Maybe a bit, bit lower, I think. So, for me, that's some good render settings. I can get them out in under 3 minutes. The Octane one took about 4 minutes per frame. So, I think that's a win for Redshift. But the colors aren't matching. The Octane looks way nicer than the Redshift. Let me just close down the render settings, because we're done with them for now. And I can show you side by side how I get my Redshift image to look like the image out of Octane. So I found a little trick using Aces, but not the conventional way. So if you go here to settings, and in here you see you have a color management tab. You're gonna click on OCIO and I already have installed my ACES file but if you click here then you can just find your ACES file. I'm also gonna leave a link in the description uh, where you can download ACES. So just click on your file and look the colors are much better right now. And I even think they look uh, more vivid and nicer than Octane's. But here's a little drawback. If you render this, you're not gonna get this image because you have to work in ACES workflow and you have to work in 32-bit and convert it in After Effects or Fusion or Nuke. And I don't really like that. I want to render out of Redshift and do a bit of color correction but that's it. So I found a little trick. If you go into LUTs, then click on LUTs, and then you're gonna find the contrast soft and contrast hard. It doesn't really matter uh, what you use. You can try out both, uh, see what's the best one for you. I use the soft one. And then I click on Convert to Log Space before applying LUT. And I also click on Apply Color Management before LUT. So now you have a gray screen. But if you turn down your strength, you can see you can control the ACES so it doesn't look that dark. And you can get a pretty good image. Let me sit to. 2500 and that's it guys so now you haven't got these blown out I can show you again um, now you haven't got these blown out spots where it just looks ugly in the metal and also here on the vase so if I just turn on easy skin turn on the lot you can see it's much better and if you think it's too soft, you can always put on a little bit of exposure and contrast. You can also just use this as a log file and then grade it in post, which I do. And I find that this technique is much better than the built-in photographic exposure. So if you go back to sRGB, no lot. And then we got the photographic exposure. We can do almost the same, uh, which is allowing overexposure. But this takes so long to render. So I would recommend you go with the ACES setup with the LUTs and you forget all about photographic exposure. 
So that is how you get Redshift to render faster than Octane and look even better. So if you haven't seen the video, I have linked it down below. Please go and check it out. And the last thing to say is just have a good day. Go and drink a cup of coffee. Um, go outside, enjoy the weather. Remember mask in these COVID times. Um, and happy rendering, guys.